Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are venturing into the finale frontier that is music spacing. Now, when I say music spacing, I'm talking about the horizontal spacing of elements, things like notes and rests and accidentals and lyrics and chords and articulations and basically anything that takes up horizontal space. Vertical spacing is something entirely different, and I covered uh, that extensively in the staff tool category as well as the page layout tool category. Um, that'll show you how to deal with spacing between staffs and between systems, um, but also individually in uh, cert for certain elements. So like expressions, for example, the vertical placement of that can be adjusted, and I've covered that in the expression tool category. Uh, same with articulations and lyrics and all that stuff. But uh, for the purposes of this series, we're talking about horizontal music spacing. Now, Finale uses a core algorithm to determine how much space is given to each item horizontally. And most of the time, this exists in the background. Uh, for most of us, we don't necessarily need to adjust it. We don't even think about it. It's just there. It works, and it's all good. However, just like anything else in Finale, uh, there are manipulations to be had and used to your advantage um, and uh, so that's kind of what we're going to do in this series. You're going to learn a lot about some of the math involved here, um, which is going to help you understand the algorithms. And then uh, I'm going to give you some uh, guidance as to ways that you can adjust them. Now, the main uh, place we're going to be making these adjustments is in the document options in the music spacing section here. And in subsequent videos, we're going to be talking about this section here where you can choose to avoid collisions of or not choose to avoid those collisions. Um, we can do things with grace notes, manual positioning, which I think a lot of you will be interested in. We're going to be talking about that extensively. Um, and then there's some other options here and including this uh, sub window for, called spacing widths. This little tiny window seems unassuming, but um, it's actually quite complicated. And towards the end of the series, we're going to talk about this and we can actually adjust the algorithm itself using some options here, uh, which is kind of interesting. So um, we will definitely get there. But again, it's involved. It involves some math. Um, and as such, I suspect that these videos will probably end up being on average a little bit longer than my uh, other videos. So just be prepared for that. Now, one thing I want to say off the bat is that this algorithm is not perfect. And I'm, I just set up a couple examples here to just show you this. Um, the first is that, you know, Finale doesn't do any kerning. Now, kerning is a little bit complicated, but essentially uh, when you space something horizontally, if you look at these flats right here, uh, the way that Finale deals with this is that there's sort of an invisible vertical line uh, that goes up and down on every single object. And that invisible line cannot cross the, uh, the next invisible line to the um, uh, of the of the element to the left or right of it, so that's why you get situations like this, where this this uh, C flat and this E flat are appear to be so far apart. In fact, if you were to draw the invisible lines lines here, they are avoiding each other. The invisible lines, however, there's plenty of space for this E flat to kind of tuck into the C flat, and that kind of tucking is what we called kerning. Now, Finale just does not have the ability to kern items. It's uh, it's an old program. The algorithms are old. Um, I really feel like I, I wish that Finale can figure this out and update that because all of the newer programs do this uh, with ease as, as if there's nothing to it. So um, it is one of the disadvantages uh, to Finale. And if you're really concerned about things like this, it's stuff that we have to fix manually. The good news is that we can fix it manually. Here's the special tools for um, uh, accidentals and we can just grab those two and just kind of you know move them to the right and now they're properly kerned and you can see how much nicer that is they're a little bit closer together it's easier to read so um, if you're paying attention to kind of to that kind of stuff you'll kind of understand how big a deal it is that finale does not kern so you know please at some point they gotta they gotta figure this out um, there's also another long-standing bug with uh, layers um, and seconds with accidentals. You can see what's going on here. Now this music is spaced out uh, exactly according to the algorithm, and you can see that the you know the E flat here on the second layer is totally crossing into the E on the uh, this the second eighth note here, and it has to do with the way that the uh, layer two notes are being shifted to the right because of the second. Um, and the flat is shifted to the left because of the second. It's just it, it's just not calculated properly. It's you know again this is something that really needs to be fixed. And the other one that always bugs me is this sort of lyric um, uh, collision here, where it only occurs when you have say a long word. In this case, the word through. 
um, on a note that's tied or slurred to another note that doesn't have a lyric on it. So in this case, I have the word through on the F tied to this F 16th. And then on the next G, I have the word might. And um, you can see that they're not avoiding each other. Um, it has to do with the fact that there's no, there's no syllable on the second F. Um, Finale is only giving you space when the lyrics uh, syllables are um, next to each other in, in, in this sense. So um, all of the other lyrics are totally fine, except right here, it's a problem. So this is another long-standing bug that I, I wish that they would uh, fix for us, but alas, that's another thing we have to deal with. All is to say that, you know, the algorithm does a lot of interesting and great things, but a couple things like this is, is you know, problematic. Now, as I was mentioning earlier, um, music spacing often happens in the background. And the reason for this is because Finale has something in the uh, preferences. So I just pressed command comma to get to the, the Finale preferences. In the edit menu, there is this option for automatic music spacing. And by default, this is checked, but we can uncheck this. And as we get further along the series, you're gonna see that I'm gonna suggest that this becomes unchecked more and more often. Um, for me personally, I prefer to have this checked only when I'm actually entering notes. It just prevents the notes from looking ridiculous and then having to manually space and all that stuff. But um, most of the time after I'm done entering notes and, and uh, lyrics and stuff, I will uncheck this to do my layout work and all that stuff. But anyway, by default, this is checked. A lot of us don't even know that this is uh, available to us. And um, after this series, you'll definitely know that this is an option. But what this does basically is that when you enter notes, and I'm just going to enter some random notes here in the left hand of the piano part here. And you can see as I'm entering them, the notes are kind of uh, bunched together until you leave the speedy entry frame. And you can see the finale just made this measure a lot wider. Uh, so it sort of calculated the space here automatically, which is really nice for us because we don't want to have everything bunched up, right? Now, if we turn music spacing off and do that same thing, in fact, I'll actually enter the same notes just like this. When I leave speedy entry, nothing happens, right? Because Finale says, you know, I told Finale not to automatically music space, and this is what happened. Now, again, this is having this unchecked is going to be good in a lot of circumstances. Um, but if you make manual adjustments, one of the issues is that if you have that checked, um, the next time you go into this uh, frame anywhere, in, uh, you know, in the score, just to enter one note. Um, as soon as you leave the frame, it's going to space the entire thing. So uh, sometimes having that checked when you're making edits is not always such a, a great idea. Um, however, even with it unchecked, um, if you end up in a situation like this where the things are all screwy, even with it unchecked, you can just select the system in this particular case and press the four key and that will manually run the music spacing that Finale would automatically run for you anyway. Um, again, all you have to do is press four. Uh, in, in older versions of Finale, it was actually command four, but believe it or not, using the selection tool, all you need is the, the four key. You don't need the command. However, uh, let me just undo this. If you're in any other tool, this is what's interesting, any other tool where you can select measures, now not all not all tools can actually select measures like this. The staff tool can, the measure tool can, for example. But if you're in a tool that can select measures and you press Command 4, it will also music space. So um, there's actually uh, two different ways you can do this. Also, from the selection tool, you can also press Command 4 and it will work the same, but um, uh, this is something you actually don't, you don't need the command key for that anymore. Just four if you're in the selection key, but you do need it command for um, if you're in another tool. Now, one thing about manually spacing music in this way is that it does calculate based on the selection made. So you do have to be somewhat careful here because if I go over here into this first system and just select the horn part on the first uh, four measures here and I press the four key to music space, it's going to music space the entire um, uh, system based on the selection. So it's only calculating the notes in the horn part. And you can see how that can be a problem. You know, you can see that my lyrics are ignored. So here's a song about music space. There's a, a, a collision there, right? It's because I'm, you know, telling Finale to ignore um, everything except the horn part. So you do have to be careful when you're music spacing like this to make sure that you have the entire 
um, uh, system selected in this case, and then press for, and then it calculates everything all at once. Now there's a sort of a, a nifty trick to this, in some circumstances like this one where I have nothing in the clarinet part, what's interesting is that if you actually select the empty bars here and press 4, uh, you can achieve an interesting effect, which is to actually make the measures themselves exactly equal width. Um, you can kind of see that what happened there. Uh, in this particular case, it kind of works okay because even at equal widths, there's enough room for the lyrics and the vocal part here. So uh, that's actually one thing you can do. It does look a little disproportional, honestly, like these eighth notes here do, do kind of seem a little uh, bunched up compared to um, other things. So uh, not always ideal, but this is an interesting idea. Uh, you can just kind of music space uh, an empty uh, staff to get uh, e you know equal width measures. Now, the next thing I want to talk about, I'm going to go towards the end of the file here, uh, is music spacing in locked versus unlocked systems. Now, this is where we start to get into a little bit of math, and uh, I'll definitely try to get into this a little bit later. And even right here, I'm going to see if I can throw up some um, uh, graphics in the video editing to uh, help illustrate this. But essentially what happens is that um, a as you add elements to a measure, in this case I have eighth notes here, I have sixteenth notes here, and you'll see that my sixteenth note measure is actually wider than my eighth note measure. Um, what happens is that Finale kind of defines each duration and assigns a kind of definitive width to it. Um, it's all proportional anyway, which I'll get into, but uh, essentially what that means is that there is a value for each duration, and in each measure basically Finale adds up those values to give you the, the total width of the measure. Now what happens in music is that we have sort of this left edge of the system and the right edge of the system. But if you take those absolute values and just keep adding and adding and adding um, and compare it to the width of the entire system, the chances that the, uh, you know, the, the measures are going to end up exactly the same width at, by the end of the system is very slim. In fact, there's almost always going to be a sort of fractional measure or a, a remainder that's going to have to be dealt with. And the way that Finale deals with this is that basically if the next measure gives you a sum that is greater than the total width of that system, then that measure gets kicked onto the next system. This will of course leave a total width that is less than the absolute width of the system, and Finale just stretches everything to fit. So let's see what happens when I um, uh, copy one measure here, and again I'm just going to have to manually respace. You can see that there's still enough room for both of these measures. If I do it again, and respace, um, you'll see that it had to kick that last measure onto the next system, um, and this becomes the last measure, right? Now, if I were to copy this measure over here and put this here, what's going to happen is that that last measure, when I respace everything, is going to add uh, too much uh, width to the system. And so you can kind of see exactly what happens here is uh, Finale is going to go ahead and kick that last measure onto the next system. Um, so that's what's going on. It's, again, there's a little bit of math involved here, but um, you know this is this is how that algorithm works. With locked systems, it's uh, slightly different, and you can tell I have a locked system by the little lock icon here. And when you have a locked system, basically what you're telling Finale is, I want you to put these measures, these particular measures, on this particular system, no matter what I, no matter what's in them, right? And Finale will dutifully obey you, um, and you can even do weird things like, you know, if I were to insert um, uh, three more measures here, uh, this whole system will remain locked. And when you respace it, and I can add more measures and more measures, eventually these notes, actually let me just do this to illustrate this point, I'm gonna, I can add 20 measures here, right? And make it look ridiculous, but Finale is dutifully obeying me because I'm saying I want you to lock this system uh, with these measures here. And you can see the, the disaster that it causes because everything's overlapping. So uh, when you lock a system, you, you really have to be aware of what you're doing. And you're, you're telling Finale that I don't care how cramped things is or what, um, you're going to squeeze those <laughs> measures into that system. But as far as the math is concerned, what happens is that, uh, you know, Finale, even though it's not automatically kicking one measure to the next system or, or anything like that, again, basically it's saying, okay, well, I have the definitive width for each of these measures, and hopefully I'm putting that up here uh, as we speak, and it's adding up to a value that's, you know, way less probably than 
what could fit um, on the whole system. So it's going to say, OK, well, I'll just stretch the entire thing to fit. So in some cases with these locked measures, you get uh, music spacing that looks really wide. But at least what it's doing is that it's um, uh, distributing them across the system proportionally, which is why you'll see that this measure looks proportionally wider uh, than this measure, if that makes sense. Now, incidentally, if you're curious about where I'm getting these measurements from, if you just select any particular measure and press the return key, you'll get into the uh, me measure attributes for that particular measure. And the one thing that you're looking for, it's actually highlighted when you first enter this window, is the width here. And in this case, it says 2.5. So this is the, you know, the width that Finale has calculated, 2.5 inches. If I actually do this on a different measure, you'll see that the width is different, 1.556. You can actually uh, navigate this way. So bar 34 is 0.875, et cetera. So you can see how the widths are actually different. You can manually change this. I'm going to talk about this uh, in a later video. But after Finale music spaces the music, these are the values that it comes up with. Now, how it gets here uh, is slightly complicated. It has to do with that spacing widths uh, window here and like how it's uh, calculating how much uh, width a quarter note gets versus an eighth note. But there's also other elements, including uh, the leading space at the measure and then accidentals are considered and all this other stuff is considered. So, you know, at the end of the day, Finale comes up with whatever value it comes up with. In this case, uh, for measure 36, it comes up with 2.5. So once these values are determined, that's what's that's what's uh, determining how the the uh, the systems behaved on locked systems or unlocked uh, systems vis-a-vis uh, -vis whether or not Finale is kicking measures onto the next system or if you have it locked, um, you know, spreading them out proportionally. Now, with automatic music spacing or with the four key type of spacing, uh, we're getting what's called note spacing. And there's actually two other types of spacing that Finale can can do. There's there's beat spacing and there's time signature spacing. And I'm going to show you kind of what the difference is. So um, currently, all of these measures right here are note spaced. I'm just hitting four to just confirm that that's the case. Uh, but if you go into the utilities menu, under the music spacing section right here, you'll actually see two other options. Well, first of all, you'll see apply note spacing, which is what we've been doing. It's saying command four, which is true. But again, with the selection tool, it's also just plain four. Um, but there's also something called beat spacing and there's time signature spacing. Now, beat spacing does have a uh, another shortcut uh, command five, or again, in the selection tool, just five will uh, initiate beat spacing. Beat spacing is a little bit different. Time signature spacing does not have a shortcut, and probably for a good reason, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, but beat spacing can be done with the five key, and I'm just going to show you how it looks different. If I press five instead of four, you get a slightly different configuration of the spacing. Now, this is where it starts to get a little bit uh, complex in understanding what's happening here. Uh, generally, note spacing is a non-linear type of spacing. What that means is that you know, the, the space allotted for a quarter note is different proportionally to an eighth note, and then the same proportion to a sixteenth note, and then the same proportion to a thirty-second note. So each decreasing value of duration gets proportionally less uh, width allotment, um, including from the whole note to the half note and the half note to the quarter note. With beat spacing, this is actually partially linear and partially nonlinear. Uh, beat spacing starts linear in the sense that it will divide the beats of the measure linearly first, which means that the, uh, the quarter notes, for example, will get exactly one quarter the space of the whole note. So in this case, you can see that the widths for measure 21, 1.2778, and the whole note 1.27778 is exactly the same. After the quarter note, then the rest of the duration start becoming nonlinear. So this is beat spacing is sort of a combination of linear and nonlinear, uh, meaning that again the quarter notes and the uh, and the whole notes get the same exact um, amount of spacing, and then the uh, after that everything becomes uh, nonlinear, and you can see that now the widths are actually starting to increase on these other measures. What is the value of this? Well, it, it, it does sort of um, create a, a, an effect of having the measures be slightly more um, uniform in width. Sometimes this is desirable, sometimes it's not. Personally, most of the time you should stick with note spacing because generally I think this is sort of 
a better looking result having that nonlinear proportional type of spacing. But this can definitely be used to effect and perhaps a, a usage of this might be for percussion music or even if you're uh, dealing with educational samples and you want to help delineate um, uh, durational values um, with width, um, this is a possible usage for beat spacing. So you can kind of see the difference between the two. And then there's time signature spacing. And again, time signature spacing does not have a uh, shortcut, so you do have to go into the utilities menu and choose apply time signature spacing. Now, time signature spacing is completely linear. Now, what this means is that every duration gets exactly half the allotment of the, the next largest duration. So a a uh, whole note gets a certain duration, a half note gets exactly half of that duration, a quarter note gets exactly half of the um, half note width, an eighth note gets exactly half of the quarter note width, etc, etc, etc. This is a completely linear type of spacing and you can kind of see the results. In this particular case it's actually not all that different from uh, note spacing but when you get into values where you have a lot of different types of um, uh, rhythms and I've just kind of set up this one here Let's see, this is note spacing. And if I change this to um, time signature spacing, you'll really see the effect here where you know you, see you have your whole note and then the half notes take up exactly half of that space, the quarter notes take up exactly half of the half note space, etc. And then by the time you get to the 16th notes, everything's really, really uh, tightly clumped together. So this is um, kind of not so great unless you're using this, again, to specific effect. Um, again, if you're... Uh, doing some educational work and you want to you know delineate that the 16th notes take up exactly the same amount of space as a, as a whole note I can see the value of this because this would um, allow you to uh, set that up especially if these were arranged um, vertically instead of horizontally like that you, you would be able to see the exact um, uh, visual aid there now, as you can see what I've been doing here, um, I've been actually doing these kind of a la carte. So I've been pressing four for this uh, system. I pressed five for this system to get beat spacing. Um, and then for here, obviously there's no shortcut. So I can, uh, I had to go in here and choose uh, time signature spacing, right? And this is totally possible in Finale. Only really if you have the automatic music spacing turned off in the preferences. Again, with this turned on, um, the automatic music spacing will always uh, apply the note spacing or the four command four uh, version of the spacing. So if you're going to do this sort of a la carte type of spacing where you're spacing different uh, systems or different measures with different um, types of music spacing, you have to make sure that that option is turned off. Otherwise, eventually it's just going to get completely undone. And one more thing about this, just to reiterate, the automatic music spacing chooses note spacing, but technically it's actually choosing the spacing that's set up in the spacing widths window here. And when we have this option checked, this is essentially note spacing. Um, you can change these factors, and then when you uh, do the note spacing, it will adhere to these factors. But you can actually use this spacing width table to get other things, including a, you can kind of synthesize um, time signature spacing using this if you really wanted to. So essentially what that would do is it would turn automatic music spacing into time signature spacing if, if that's what you needed to do. Um, uh, so technically it, it is doing note spacing, it, but more technically um, it's actually adhering to the spacing widths table. Uh, uh, this is the automatic music spacing I'm talk talking about. Now, just a couple other things before we wrap this video up. Uh, you should understand that you can apply music spacing differently between the score and the parts. So in these first four measures, I've just applied uh, note spacing, but I could, if I wanted to, go into the uh, horn part here and take these four measures and apply beat spacing. And that would uh, you know, give me a different result. So it is entirely possible to have different types of spacing uh, versus in the score versus the part. So just be aware that that's actually an option. And interestingly, this is something that I, I never really have a use for, but it is available to us in this music spacing uh, menu item here. There is this option down here called apply music spacing to selected parts and score. Uh, and this is just a simple utility that allows you to choose either note spacing, beat spacing, or time signature spacing and apply it to any group of uh, parts or scores that you want. So if you said, you know what, I want to have beat spacing, if you had beat spaced in the score, but you said, I want to have note spacing for the clarinet and horn in F part, 
Um, as soon as you check these and you click OK, it's going to run note spacing on the entire part. Unfortunately, you can't sort of um, uh, do this uh, measure by measure. It just sort of applies to the whole part. Um, so as soon as you do that, you've just applied note spacing to the uh, clarinet and the horn part. So um, that option is available. Again, it's sort of um, uh, very specialized. Uh, if you're really doing things with you know, difference beat spacing versus time signature spacing and all that stuff, uh, this little uh, utility is available to you as well. All right, so that's the gist of it. Congratulations, you made it to the end of uh, lesson one. Um, in lesson two, we're going to start looking at the avoid collisions of, which is where we can actually choose, uh, we can actually tell Finale uh, which items to consider in the in the note spacing, which can have some interesting effects and uh, can be used in, in certain uh, special ways. So uh, come back for that. That's going to take a little bit of time. We're going to talk about every single one of these options and um, what they mean. It, it actually might end up being two videos, but we'll see how it goes. Um, so yeah, so that's coming up next. Um, so once again, thanks for watching. I hope you've learned a few things already, and we have a lot more to go with music spacing in, uh, in, in this series, so I'm looking forward to it. Once again, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I will see you soon on the next video.